What is up, guys? We are close to a lot of new unveils tonight. Hope everyone's having a good end to your weekend. My weekend's been pretty darn good. Uh, can't complain, for sure. Been driving around the MX-5. I still have it for a couple more days. It's just been a joy. I'll just say that. Hopefully you guys saw my review on the MX-5. It's just passion done right in a vehicle. So I'll pause my metal music, Let's listen to a little metal to get me pumped up for tonight because I'm usually in bed by this time. So <laughs> needed a little jolt to get me going because guys, we'll be here for a couple hours tonight. Uh, so we're going, uh, what's, what's nine o'clock? So the first thing that's going to be happening tonight in about 20 minutes, less than 20 minutes from now is going to be Toyota talking about electrification and the they're beyond zero. Um, I haven't found a live stream. If you guys want to help me out and find a live stream from Toyota, I've looked through everything uh, or seemingly and I cannot find a live stream for them for not only they're beyond zero, but also their Lexus presentation. So you guys would all would love to help me on that regard. Do a little Google search, see if, what you can find, maybe a little bit of YouTube search as well. I would really appreciate that. But what do we have from Toyota tonight? Uh, it's going to be beyond zero and it's happening at 3.20 a.m. CET, CET, which is 15 minutes or so from now, Eastern Standard Time. And it's not it's not Monday here yet. It's it's uh, Sunday night, as you guys know. Well, I don't know where you're at in the world. You guys are all over the place, and that's awesome. The luxurious fleet is strong worldwide. Worldwide, it's amazing. How's everyone doing? Madison says, "Hurry up, Kirk Rifle's live stream is starting." Yes, I am here. Uh, Direct Four hopes. Okay, yeah, we'll talk about Direct Four tonight. Buenos noches, senor. Sykesapop, how's it going, man? How's it going? Hello from Melbourne. Now, Martin, is it Melbourne, Australia, or Melbourne, Florida? <laughs> I'm assuming Australia, Melbourne. Uh, will, when will there be a redesigned Lexus RC? This is Charles in NYC. I have no idea. The RC is the linchpin for Lexus racing. So, and I just triggered my uh, Amazon smart device by saying that. And she'll probably get triggered many times <laughs> tonight. I don't know. I don't know. Don't know what they're going to do with the RC. Uh, Super Watt says, he, says hello from Thailand. What's up? Where's everyone from tonight? Internet dude's in the house. He just got a RAV4 Prime internet dude. That's pretty baller. He used to have a Tesla Model S, I believe. May or may not still have the Lexus LS 500, but now he also has RAV4 Prime. Pretty cool. Uh, Kevin says he's from Florida. So am I nowadays. Pretty cool. Montreal, Dallas, representing Canada. Carlos, what's going on? Is there an ES live stream? You would think Toyota and Lexus would be able to figure out a live stream because check this out. Guys, we got a lot of stuff coming. It's not just Toyota and Lexus tonight. Nissan has a live stream. So if you guys are willing to stay up or just stick with me, I'll be going live at 1020. Now, there's also another live stream at 1040 and that's Genesis. So guys, we have a really long night ahead of us. I got my beverages to keep us entertained and just to keep me awake. So it, it's it's a packed night. Genesis, by the way, I'm going to talk about them real quick. They just opened up their first studio in Shanghai. So great timing, right? So they're going to be making a big splash tonight. Uh, just, what, a week ago or so, they unveiled the Genesis X concept. And that is going to be... Uh, an electric vehicle, seemingly, if they can bring it to production in that state. Uh, yeah, I ex expect electrified vehicles from them tonight. Uh, Nissan, well, 
Nissan probably just going to talk about the Aria, maybe some updates on the Leaf, maybe some plug-in vehicle, plug-in hybrids, I should say. So it'll be interesting to see what they have to say uh, come in 72 minutes from now. Honda, Honda, let's not forget about big old Honda here. Uh, and don't forget, Honda also has Acura in China, so we'll see some Acura stuff tonight. Well, maybe not, but it is there in Shanghai. Um, so if you just want to look at their what they have to announce, so they have ah, uh, there was a loud whirring noise, and it's my studio light that's like seven feet away from me. Has a little fan in the back of it. It's spinning. It sounds funny through my head. Anyways, back to Honda. Uh, Ch China's first Honda brand EV model will be announced tonight. Hopefully it's SUV E. Could be the Honda E. I don't know. Plug-in model uh, is coming as well. So plug-in hybrid could be based on the same car. I, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what they have to say. But again, just like Toyota, I don't know where a live stream or Honda is either. Um, you guys would like to also research that for me. I would appreciate that because I could not find one. Uh, so I should probably search for the next 10 minutes, <laughs> see what we can find. All right, when, there, when will we be getting a new Tundra? Well, uh, the announcement I'm expecting this summer, but Toyota hasn't told me anything. And if they did, I couldn't tell you anyway. So. I will, we will be seeing a Tundra by the end of the year. I can almost guarantee that, unless something catastrophic happens. We're seeing Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, Indiana, Vienna. Now is that Vienna, Italy, or is that Vienna, because there's a Vienna, Nebraska? And I think there's also like a Vienna, Florida, so. Probably the real Vienna in, in Italy, right? No, no, Vienna. Oh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm, is it Vienna? Gosh, my, I'm going to have to look it up. My geography would be way off. It's Austria. What am I thinking? What's, what's the town in Italy that is sinking? Uh, water town, Italy. Gosh, my geography is so bad right now. Venice. Okay, it was a V and an E. And and yes, I apologize. My ignorance is shining through. It's late, guys. I'm usually in bed at this time. I'm artificially up right now by stimulants. <laughs> and yes, I apologize if you're from Vienna, Austria. So that's quite embarrassing, showing my true Americanness and ignorance of the world. But you know what? I'm, I'm human. I'm human, and that's what makes me entertaining. Okay. Uh. <laughs> But there, I'm, there, I'm pretty sure there is a Vienna, Nebraska. Don't know if there's a Vienna, Florida. That's a, that's a Venice, Florida. Anyways, got I got to move on. Um, I can't talk about whether there'll be direct for t or t tonight or not. Uh, Langston Reese, he's he's pulling out all stops here. Read this now. It's the 19th, not the 18th. Guys, guys, guys. I know, I know. It says the 19th but it's happening tonight i promise you i promise you it's 10 a.m right now in shanghai yes so it's the 19th there happening the 19th for china which means it's 18th for me for the next three hours 9 a.m yeah i know i know i know i know austria i'm just getting now to the comments Oh my gosh, Venice. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the Venice comments in there to help me out. I'm struggle, struggle bus. And we're just getting, yeah, 9 p.m. bed. Kent, brother. I have babies. I have four little daughters, and they get up before the sun gets up. That's like 5 a.m. is usually waking time for me. Oh, shout out from Toronto says, says uh, F1. What's up? What's up? In bed by 9 p.m. I know, guys, I'm old. 32. Four kids. What do you expect? Jeez. Want me to go? Don't throw ragers every night like I did back in the day. Did I? Was I a, a lame college kid? You guys will never know.
What other autos am I reviewing? Um, well, I'm trying to get, well, there's a good chance I'm getting some Genesis models in the near future, so stay tuned. Steven, it's not, it's happening tonight, bro. It's morning in Shanghai on Monday. Trust me. No, check this out, bro. Check this out. Look at the Nissan live stream live in 67 minutes, bro. I understand how the world works, sort of. I don't know where Vienna is. Apparently, I think it's Venice sinking in the, I don't know, the Mediterranean Sea or whatever that is. It could, what's, what's the sea on the other side? Adrian Sea? Adriatic Sea? See, I'm, I'm pulling out my geography skills. Adriatic Sea? Is that between Greece and Italy? Is that where Venice is? I don't know, guys. Ah. <sighs> Stanley, yes, I have four little girls. I don't mess around, guys. I'm potent. Join, join from Sweden. I don't know what that means. Connie, oh, Connie Carlson is joining from Sweden. Welcome, Connie. What's going on? Genesis needs to expand their dealer network. Amen. But check out, check out their dealer. Look at this dealer in Shanghai for Genesis. If they only did it right from the start here in America like this, guys. Well, let's check this. This is insane. This is craziness. Oh, that, that didn't work. But yeah, check out their amenities, guys. Just craziness. If, if, if Genesis had dealerships like this in America, they would be just killing it but they don't they're in hyundai dealerships and that is a problem seed dx throwing me a five spot canadian bless you brother or sister what car do you want your daughters to own in the future it's a scary thought my oldest is five years old so she'll be a driving age in 11 years 11 years from now, I have no idea what the world is going to look like, let alone the car landscape. Uh, I'm hoping to hold on to my Toyota Prius that long and just be like, just keep it a mainstay on the channel. And if you guys don't know, the Prius's name is Fuji. So there you go. Maybe Fuji will make it through the girls, take the beating by the girls and there's no clutch to destroy in it in theory so they can't you know like wear out the manual transmission on it like the old days so uh they can they can definitely crash it and whatnot let's not put that out there though we're a long ways away so my 20 was it a, i think it's a 2012 my my prius it's gonna it's good i want it to to live a long time for the sake of kids having a <laughs> a dinosaur by the time they get it be fun oh gosh yes i know it's a prius it's my wife's favorite car so it is what it is leo's car's name is pokey hyundai bayonne was uncovered yeah well hyundai must be doing their live stage. okay hold on hold on pulling out all stops here It wasn't covered. I think the whole thing wasn't covered a while back. Yeah, I think the whole th we don't get it here in America. Links it might be trying to trip me up because I'm awfully gullible tonight. Battery may or may not wear out by then, Matthew. And if it does, here's the thing. Here's the thing, guys. There's a lot of cool stuff coming on on Prius renovations, old like first, second gen Prius. Uh, I hear people are working on a full lithium ion replacement battery for Prius. Cost maybe two grand, something like that. Pricing hasn't been finalized because the product's not finalized. But it transforms like my t my second, I guess technically I have, a, I have a third gen Prius. Technically it's a third gen Prius. It transforms that from like 45 miles per gallon to like 55 miles per gallon just by switching to the lithium ion battery pack. So... I'm okay with the battery pack going so I can play with it. Maybe put in a more potent battery pack or more, yeah, more energy dense, more energy, 
power power dense as well. Energy dense and power dense. Yes. Yeah, it, it does look amazing. It's, it's probably a former Borders or Barnes & Noble store. It's pretty baller. Look at all those LEDs, guys. It's amazing. And Marino, thank you so much. Five spot. Hello from Austin, Texas. What's your best dad's joke? It, I'm terrible at jokes. I'm, I'm, I have a good sense of humor. I've never been able to do jokes. I'll just say that. Like... I'm spontaneous with my humor. It doesn't, it's not like, oh, here's, you know, like a peanut butter and jelly joke or something like that. Like, I, I don't, it's not in my body. It's not in my blood. I don't have a joke bone. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not even funny right now. So I'm just going to cut myself off. Uh, why is my Prius called Fuji? Um, well, that's a, the mountain in Japan. And, it was built in Japan, but also because it's red and there's also Fuji apples that are kind of red. I don't know. I just picked Fuji and it's it's stuck. When does this start? Well, really any second now. Um, I'm just going to refresh this page because this is the only page. This is actually the European uh, Toyota newsroom and I'm going to refresh it this page because I cannot find a live stream for Toyota. Don't know what they're doing. Uh, Nissan has a live stream. Genesis has a live stream. So Mr. Hawk is checking in from Seattle. Crypto Pimp is in the house. Oh, Quackers. Quackers, I get that joke, Crypto. And also buying, uh, uh, nope, don't know what that means. Tiger emoji. Coming from Florida. What's up, Aerogen Games? Is there any news on the Lexus RX? No. I mean, I think we're going to get a lot of information on the next RX when the new NX comes out, but I pretty much speculated on what the new NX is going to be. So there for the new RX. I, I really don't know. I would hope that they have a fully electric version, and that's what I've heard. Don't know if that's true or not. So, yeah. Steven Chan, I might have to like quelch you. Squelch? Squelch? Is that, is that it's a term I haven't used since playing Diablo back in the day? Where you mute someone? Because um, he's saying the live Toyota live stream is not happening tonight. Bro, their announcements are happening tonight here in America. It's actually Monday morning. I'm not I'm done. I can't I can't reason with unreasonable people. I'm done. I'm done. I can't, I can't read you, Mr. Stephen Chan. Hello from Perth. The King Salmon, Perth. I've never been on the west coast of Australia. I've been to Brisbane, I've been, to, been to the Gold Coast, been to Byron Bay. Never have I been to Perth, and I would love to. There's a YouTuber on the west coast of Australia that I, I enjoy watching, uh, YBS Bear Fishing, YBS. I think that's what they're called. Uh, Brody. Brody, he's a, he's a spearfisher on the west coast of Australia, and it's just unreal, the water out there. The wildlife is crazy, too. But anyways, Beast B011, first ever live stream. Welcome to the live stream. Guys, let's refresh. Let's see what's coming down the hatch. It's 920 right now. There's nothing on the Europe newsroom. There shouldn't be anything on the Chinese newsroom quite yet because it says, please come to the Lexus booth, Hall 6.2. Now, the Lexus presentation shouldn't be happening for 20 more minutes in theory. Um, so, yes, yes. I'm going to be checking out everything on my secondary browser on the Toyota end of things to make sure anything did come up. And it just did. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. Something just popped up. Holy cow. Here it is, guys. That looks like a RAV4. Toyota debuts all-electric SUV concept. Holy cow. It is the BZ4X. Um, it was one of the electric websites saying, like, hey, it's going to be called the BZ4X. 
but it's still concept. Slow the roll, Kirk. Don't get too excited. BZ4X battery electric vehicle concept includes new all-wheel drive system package and sleek SUV design. And it looks, guys, it looks so similar. Uh, hold on. Hold the phone. It has its own Toyota Flare on it. Uh, it looks so similar to the Subaru Evoltis. I'll pull it up for you guys. Don't worry, I'm getting there. Just flying through, flying through. Here's the Subaru Evoltis. This was the Subaru Evoltis concept. Hopefully you guys can see that. That's what the Subaru Evoltis concept, even this door line is similar. Boom. And there it is. That's a little bit different on this vehicle. All right, let's keep reading. Solidifies Toyota's global commitment towards carbon neutrality by 2050. Yep, that's, well, I think Nissan wants to get there by 2040, but all of them are roughly the same goal-wise, but uh, yeah, getting there by 2050 by most. Neon Rain, hello from Washington State. Thanks, brother. You guys have some great apples coming from your state. Appreciate the content. Your channel is great. Well, you're great, Neon. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, and a lot of great people coming from Washington State, not just the apples. A sucker for Washington produce and stone fruit. I was in the pro. I, I worked as a produce uh, guy in an organic grocery store back in the day. So let's keep reading. Electrified pro product portfolio to expand to seventy models globally by twenty twenty five. That's going to okay, including fifteen new battery electric vehicles, of which seven will be BZ models. <laughs> Guys, we have so much stuff to go over tonight. This is going to be a long stream, and I'll probably have to make videos tomorrow. Uh, Toyota plans on bringing electrification to its truck lineup, including hybrid and battery electric vehicle powertrains. Now, guys, this is coming from Toyota Press Room here in America. To me, what that's saying is that they're bringing hybrid pickup trucks, which is a no we knew, we knew that. We knew that. But battery electric pickup trucks just like the f-150 is getting a battery electric just like the silverado is getting battery electric the tundra the tacoma maybe the forerunner could be as well holy cow holy cow so let's read through this uh toyota envisions a future in which carbon neutrality is achieved blah 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 i'll try to I'll try to skim through this because if i speak out loud it's going to take me a lot longer to pick out the goodness Okay, so uh, the BZ4X concept, that means the BZ4X is definitely going to be, should be in theory, because if we go back up to here, we're going to have seven BZ models. Excuse me. So BZ4X will become a production vehicle. Is a vision for the first of the global series of battery electric vehicles to be introduced under the Toyota BZ brand umbrella. All right, BZ4X concept joins a full lineup of electrified vehicles and lineup that in total accounts for more than 40% of all the alternative powertrain vehicles sold in the United States. Okay, because they're talking about their hybrids, their hybrids alone account for about 40% of the non fully gasoline or diesel vehicles. Okay, it's kind of, you, got, you have to read between the lines here. These alternative powertrains include, okay, Yes, all right. <laughs> I could have read the next sentence and it just explained that. Anyways, 70 electrified vehicles or models, same thing, globally by 2025. This future lineup will feature 15 dedicated BEVs, including seven carrying the BZ Beyond Zero brand moniker. In addition, Toyota intends uh, brand electrification to its pickup truck lineup in the near future, including hybrid and battery electric vehicle powertrains. This diverse portfolio of electrified products will help propel Toyota towards its goal of carbon neutrality. Ooh, ooh, it's a short press release, and then we're gonna fly through pictures, maybe some video. Oh man, I'm just I'm excited, guys. And we got a lot more stuff to cover tonight, too. It's only 9.26. All right, so Bob Carter, 
Toyota Motor North America Executive Vice President of Sales. He's saying the BZ4X points to a yet another option in already robust electrified portfolio. Toyota, we are a human-centered company. The customer is our CEO and will ultimately decide which technologies will carry us towards a carbon-neutral future. Blah, blah, blah. Jointly developed with Subaru, there you have it, the, two, the Toyota BZ4X. That is such a hard thing to say, guys. BZ4X. I wish it was just like, I don't know. I wish it was just called like RAV5. I don't know. Something simple for us to like just cling on to. BZ4X. Yeah, I have a BZ4X. It's like, no, I have a Tundra. Two, sil two syllables. BZ4X. Four syllables. Land Cruiser. Three syllables. Like, it is a mouthful. Supra. Supra, uh, obviously it's two syllables, like eight, six. I don't know. It's just a lot of syllables to get out BZ4X, you know? It's a bit wordy, even though in typing it's four digits, but when you say it, like, it doesn't have a ring. It's not a good ring, in my opinion. A mouthful. Oh, man. So I'm going to have to take a drink here. We, we got a long time, long time to sink this in. Long, long wheelbase and short overhangs, which are all electric vehicles should be. Um, so giving ample interior space. Let's see here. Toyota plans to produce the BZ4X in Japan and China. That's why it was, uh, it was announced at the Shanghai Motor Show. And it hopes to begin worldwide sales of the model by the middle of 2022. I'm thinking about this. So that means America is going to be the last ones, one of the last ones, one of the last ones. Now, worldwide sales. There are a lot of markets this vehicle has to get to, and it's only going to be produced in two two areas uh u.s product details will be shared at a later date um so how i see this is similar to what tesla is already doing the japanese bz4x will be well the battery in that bz4x spread out to the majority of the world and more than likely is a panasonic battery uh gr like Green Planet Energy Solutions or whatever the joint venture is between Toyota and uh, to uh, Toyota and Panasonic, whatever that joint venture is, should be producing the batteries in theory for that global BZ4X. In China, I expect it to be either CATL, BYD, or both, because remember the BZ uh, Toyota works with FAW and whatever the other Chinese large Chinese manufacturer is there. So they could have two different battery suppliers in China alone, and then I would expect Panasonic to provide the batteries for the global product. That's just my theory. And we, when is this going to be getting here? I would say middle of 2022. So summer of 2022 is when I expect, because the U.S. is their least priority. That's how I see it. U.S. is their least priority when it comes to their battery electric lineup. That's just my opinion. Again, more details coming at a later date. So uh, crazy, 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 crazy. Um, I'm just going to fly around some other updates. Um, there's also the global newsroom that has the BZ4X, but we should probably look at the images and see if we can. Uh, it's not letting me zoom in. Uh, so let, let me see what you guys are looking at. Celica comeback. Uh, that could happen. Remember, they refreshed the trademark on the Celica. So I would say Celica coming back is stronger than 
Tesla fans don't count as car enthusiasts. Um, I have met some that are car enthusiasts. They're more tech enthusiasts, I would say, in general. Which, in the future, it's less like that's just what's happening. Cars and cars, cars are more and more technological, especially as they become more electrified, which is sad, but it's just the way it is. All right. Okay, let's just look at some images, guys. Images. Actually, better yet, let's play a video. Okay, so it's just on a turntable here. So we're just going to look at the lines. I mean, it looks... I mean, they, they did say that it was going to be a RAV4 size. Uh, we have the very Lexus-like rear LED light that goes across the rear taillights. The rear lights to me look very Toyota though, the taillights themselves, at least the general design. Of course, those are full LED. Um, and it has, to me, it has a little bit of Lexus UX to it as well. And that angle in the back hatch, it's almost a little uh, Venza. The front is very unique though, very, very unique for a Toyota. That's for darn sure. So that's a cool little 360 video we got of it. Pretty, pretty cool. I don't, what do you guys think? Do you like it? And if you guys look from the site, can I pause it? Oh, no, oh darn, I ruined it. If we go all the way. Guys, doesn't this side profile almost kind of look like the LF, uh, LFZ electrified concept? Now it's a little bit higher and not quite as long and sleek looking as a Lexus electrified concept, but you can see that they're, especially this front portion here, you can definitely see that they're the same company. And let's, uh, okay, we got some volume on this one. God, that's loud. Hold on. It's really loud for me. Oh gosh, my, my headphones were up all the way. See if I can zoom this in for you guys. Is that better? Yeah, that's a little bit better for you guys. <laughs> Ooh, you see those? The headlights are very Lexus triple beam. Lexus and Toyota are becoming more and more similar. More and more similar. There's some weird, weird stuff talking about Toyota and Lexus these days and the future, but I'm not, I'm not gonna go into that tonight, guys. I don't care how much money you throw at me. Here's the lit. Here's the uh, logo here. Uh, I'll just zoom in again. BZ4X. That is the exact same trademark logo we had from earlier in the week. Uh, it's pretty cool looking, guys. Man, it's exciting. Toyota. Having pretty much take it's it's a Rav4. Let's be real. It's it's a Rav4 package, and they're making it electrified because a Rav4 is their best-selling vehicle. It is genius on their part, them making an electric Rav4, and they call the BZ4X. So it's like kind of taking after the Rav4 because they're keeping four in the naming. Uh yes. I'm going to start reading a little bit of comments here. Let's, uh, I want to look at this drive selector though, real quick. Traction control, you can still defeat, that's cool. You have automatic parking, you have a camera button. Very Toyota. Pedal adjustment. Oh, uh, what? We have pedal height adjustment here, guys. You see this little button right there? When was the last Toyota you saw with pedal height adjustment? I can't, I can't even think. Oh, this car is totally production ready. ready. <laughs> totally. So if, if the global product's going to be available by mid-2022, this vehicle is probably going to be hitting a lot of Chinese market by the end of the year, uh, Japan by the end of the year, maybe. Uh, Europe, definitely. Shortly, I would say Europe would be shortly after China. Japan might hit, uh, yeah, 
Your US is gonna be one of the last markets to get this, but it's still mid 2022. It's about a year from now, a little later than a year. And this thing is going to do well. Um, wish I had more images of the NTI, oh, I do. All right, so we have kind of like this cloth-like texture on the dash. Uh, the speedometer is fully digital. Kind of sticks up, that's very different. And the steering wheel. Oh, that is weird. The steering wheel might not change in the middle. It might stay fixed in the middle. I think there's a Citroen car or some Citroen car, so we don't get in here in America, where when you turn the wheel, the buttons and the airbag covering the horn, they stay fixed. So that could be happening here with the steering wheel. I'm not saying that it is, but it kind of looks like that. Um, large touchscreen, that thing is huge. It's still probably a 12 inch screen because Toyota's probably bought them in mass. I know they have bought them in mass. Um, we have some plugins down here. Looks like a USB-C and maybe a 12 volt connector. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. So looks really, really, really good guys. Um, essentially triple beam headlights like you would see on a Lexus and Fingers crossed, Lexus has a, a fully electric car coming soon. Hopefully around the same time as this car. If not, it's 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 uh they're losing they're losing a small part of the market, but it's still an important part of the market in my opinion. Okay. All right, let's let's read. You guys are talking about guns? Jeez, what's happening? Um, Toyota Global shows a yoke rather than a steering wheel. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, here's a Toyota Global, I think. It's global. The global one. Yeah, pretty sure it's global. View with caption. I just click on them, unlike the American site, or is it going to force me to download them all at once? Oh, this is a yoke. No way. What? What? What is going on? Why don't they have consistency between their markets? I understand they're different markets. Guys, we have a yoke. What? Why can't, why can't I just download this? Oh, here we go. Oh my gosh. There we go. Glory. Is that cookies button? I had to accept the cookies in order to open this. We have a full fledged. That's not those those sound effects was not because of the yoke. It's because of this right here, guys. This is the same leaked sort of uh, integration. Uh, as we got on the new Lexus NX. Those double touchpads, so this touchpad controls this screen. This touchpad will control that screen. That's the same exact integration we saw on the leaked NX. Uh, don't worry, guys. I'll find it. I'll find it for you. Here it is. See that? Look how similar-ish, similar-ish. I mean, the climate control is definitely fancier on the on the NX, but guys, look at that. Look at that steering wheel. Look at these little touch pads here. And you look at these touch, it's the same exact, exact, it's like exactly the same. The texture is a little bit different. The button shapes are a little bit different. But the interface is exactly, the same. What do you guys think about that? Am I still a personal trainer? No. No, I, I rarely work out anymore. I still feel good. I, I actually feel better than what I did when I worked out in a lot of ways. Um, don't know how long <laughs> that's going to last, but I still, I, I don't work out much anymore. Leo asking some personal questions. Sergeant Kobe's in the house. Let's flip through these images. And in fact, guys, it's time to move on 
to uh, Lexus, I believe. Believe it's time to go through the Lexus end of things. I have a video going up shortly uh, about the Lexus ES. So let's um, let me see if what I can find on Lexus USA. There we go. Here's the new ES. Let's go through it. We can do this all night long, guys. As long as I can keep up. Uh, 2022 Lexus ES, the quintessential luxury sedan, is refreshed inside and out. I have a video going up on this in three minutes. I knew all about it. Uh, it's a refresh. And let's get into it. New touchscreen. So they brought the screen four inches closer. So you guys have uh, touchscreen capabilities as, long as, as well as uh, the remote touch interface. You have the IS's safety features. So it gets upgraded from 2.0 to 2.5. Um, newly designed by LED headlights. These are hit or miss in my opinion. I've already expressed my opinion on it uh, earlier this week. And we can flip through the images, but the new LEDs, this is a shorter LED headlight here. Well, it's a shorter daytime running light on the triple beams. The normal by LED headlights look identical. So if you're getting the triple beams, they're gonna look different. They're gonna look a little bit more modern. Don't know if they look better. I think they look less elegant, a little bit more machine-like. Um, yeah, there's gonna be new colors. So the colors here, you have Iridium, and then you have Cloudburst Gray. They're getting rid of Silver Lining Metallic. They're getting rid of Nebula Gray, and they're also getting rid of a really, really good color, Atomic Silver. Um, and these colors are going to be kind of filling in those spots for them. This is ultrasonic blue mica 2.0. Now, in terms of what else is new for the ES, uh, well, on the F-Sport, they have blacked out wheels. So the finish is just a little bit darker. They didn't black out the chrome around the windows for the F-Sport, which is a lost opportunity, just like it was back in 19, 2019. Uh, when they unveiled the ESF Sport, so I was a little disappointed there. Um, powertrains are exactly the same. They have revised the brakes on the vehicle. They have re revised a rear suspension piece, so it's supposed to make it ride better, brake better, feel better, um, handle better. Let's see what else. What else? I'm spewing out a ton of information from the video I made earlier today. Uh, ES300H will receive F-Sport in some markets. We don't know what, what regions those are going to be yet. Uh, it's been available in Australia, probably Europe, uh, Asia. America has been like the only market not to get the ES300H in F-Sport, guys. Now we will be getting it, but it said select regions, so not all of America. So it's kind of weird. Um, no Direct 4. There is no Direct 4 coming, and... The, yeah, it would have been too much too fast, the way Lexus does things. They're not going to unveil a new technology and then uh, bring it out three months later, or whatever, four months later in a, in a refresh. They're going to wait for a full redesign for a specific vehicle to bring out Direct 4. Will we see it on the NX? I think that would be, logically, the First way we see a Direct 4 with the NX450H Plus, it needs to be different, in my opinion, than the RAV4 Prime's powertrain. Uh, I don't want that front wheel drive feeling in an, in a, an, an Alexis, uh, and it, it needs to separate itself from the NX, in my opinion. We need more power towards the rear wheels. We'll see what Lexus does, see what they do. Uh, my butt's getting, it's, it's falling asleep. I haven't moved in a while. Triple, bre trip, triple beam on a Prius Prime. Hey, tri trip, trippies everywhere, guys. I have, a, I have an emoji for that. Bring on the trippies. Guys, bring on those trippies. All right. Um, what else? So there's going to be some new wheels on the ES. Uh, we really don't have, okay, these these are the new wheels here. 
These are the base wheels, 17s, that no one really ever sees unless you live in Florida. <laughs> like, I never, ever saw base wheels on an ES living in Nebraska. They're all the, the premium wheels, luxury wheels. They're all 18s. I rarely saw 17s on a new ES back home. So, yeah. Um, this is a new interior color. It's called Acorn. It's like a dark brown. So... Got that. Um, we no longer have Chateau in the interior. So, excuse me there. No Chateau on the interior. They got rid of that. They got rid of Flaxen, which I'm okay with because Flaxen was pretty ugly. Uh, what is this? What's this? Oh, that's just the heated seats up front. I almost got excited for rear. Heated rear outboard seats in the ES. Yeah, we don't get that in America. I still don't believe. Even though the Avalon, you can get heated rear upward seats. Oh, shoot. The Honda Accord Touring Hybrid that I was just in, which is a thirty, was a $36,000 car, had heated rear outboard seats. Can't get that on the ES here in America. Guys, I get, I get so fired up on, on Lexus. So fired up. Earth tones don't make it earthy. True. Some wise words there. Um, here's the new grill. Um, this, I should just flip through the pictures that I have as I can show you guys these pictures. Okay. Those are the mirrors. Nothing excited. Uh, here are the trips. Here are the standard. So your standard LED headlights look identical as far as I'm concerned to the outgoing models or the pre refresh. Here are the trips. Yeah. Um, I don't think they look as good. That's just my opinion. I like the other ones better. Now, maybe they'll grow on me. More likely they will. That's usually how it is with Lexus, is it, grow, it grows on me. Uh, there's a touchscreen. It's large and in charge, right in the middle. They brought it forward, which is great. Uh, they still kept the clock. I like that, they kept the clock. Uh, F-Sport seats. There's gonna also gonna be a white interior, which I think was on the black line edition, like the 2021 black line edition ES F-Sport. But now we will be getting it uh, as an option here in the F-Sport models. White interior, heads up display, nothing. Uh, wireless charger inside the armrest, kind of worthless if you ask me. Um, there's a red interior, the trunk, whatever, wheels. Uh, headlights look they look cool they definitely look really really cool when they're on but when they're off i think the other ones definitely look more elegant that's just my opinion uh this is the ultrasonic blue mica 2.0 color you're seeing here and look wait what's going on here as you see this see what's going on here i didn't look that closely earlier so <laughs> this is an es250 the only es250 we get here in the united states is all-wheel drive so i think these pictures are also keep in mind remember that they unveiled this at the shanghai motor show uh china gets the es250 front wheel drive north america is the only one that gets the es250 all-wheel drive so that's why you don't see an all-wheel drive badge here Hopefully you guys followed me on that. It's a little confusing. Uh, but yeah, there it is. There's a new grill. And I think it looks pretty cool. I mean, I, I don't think it's as elegant. Again, I don't think it's as elegant looking as the old grill with... I mean, it's essentially the same pattern as the old grill, but they've added these hooks, these L hooks in here to make it different looking and I don't I I think I like the other one better I think it looked more elegant so yeah I mean I guess we can zoom in on the grill here what do you guys think of the grill because Lexus is all about the grill nowadays so I'll just be quiet and uh, wait wait for your guys's opinion on the grill it looks a little bit more predator than, than ever with this new, uh, I think so. A little bit more Predator. Fishnet can be good or bad, depends on what you see it on. 
See, that could have been, that's kind of a bad, that's not a dad joke. This is kind of like a dirty old man joke. Uh, so, kind of getting old already, guys. OB Deaton prefers the old one. Okay, NEC likes the pattern better than the outgoing one. Spider-Man? Okay, I can see the webs. I can see the webs. Spider-Man would be cool because... Not, not on this color, not the, on the Iridium. Spider-Man would be cool on this color. But guess what? On this color, you can't get that Spider-Man grill. I mean, this is kind of spider-ish, right? The mesh pattern's pretty spider-ish. So I guess, I guess so. But this one definitely looks more Spider-Man, right? Wouldn't you say? The mesh pattern looks more like a fence. Chain link fence kind of sort of thing. This looks more like spider web. But you can't get this blue color on here. But you can, you can get uh, Nightfall Mica, which is a dark blue, which is a pretty cool color as well. Yeah, there's a grill. I guess I, guess I could have left it there. Yep, yep, yep. 300H. No differences to the 300H. Oh, this is a, a picture uh, that I used in my video today uh, that just went live talking about how, oh yeah, the 300H f has been available in other markets. This one is from Lexus Australia. So, yep. <laughs> Did they say anything about solid state? Well, let's see what if lexus had anything else to say about no all that they all they have is this press release on the es there's no information here on uh their electric plants even though i know at the press like the announcement there in shanghai that they said that they're going to be talking about their electrified vision um So I don't know if we have anything on that though. I'll probably just refresh all of my um, Toyota pages on my other screen here to see if we can find any more Lexus information maybe on their electrified end of things. What was that? What was that? Okay, that's good there. False alarm. I'm just flipping through my Toyota and Lexus pages. To see if there's anything different in terms of electrification on the Lexus end. So, so far it's just the ES. Then maybe they announced the ES first. Because their press release could still be going, or their press briefing there in China could still be going on at this point in time on the other side of the world. Um, but it's unlikely at this point, the way I'm flipping through here, that we're going to see anything in terms of Lexus electrification. Uh, seems like they already let the, hat, the cat out of the bag with the LFZ electrified concept. Uh, so I don't know what we're going to see there, guys. Not much from the looks of it. Huh. I didn't see anything. Oh. Gotta adjust myself. There we go. What will come first, the new MR2, Celica, or Honda S2000? Uh, I, I would assume that a new Celica would come first, then the MR2, and then maybe an S2000. I just don't see a new S2000 coming back, even though I want it. I want it so, so bad. I just don't know if it's going to happen. Uh, Mr. Park says, will it come in all-wheel drive for the ES300? Now, uh, in America, not that I know of. Uh, otherwise, they would have announced it. So the ES Hybrid... 
in other markets, I've heard that it could be getting all-wheel drive, electric, all, an e-all-wheel drive, an e-axle on the back. That's what I've heard. I don't know the timing. I don't know if it's with this refresh. I don't know if it's until the next generation. I really don't know in terms of an all-wheel drive outside of uh, the United States for the ES. All right, I think since the the ES, oh, this you see this is bugging out here, that light countdown. <laughs> this is freaking out, <laughs> freaking out down there. Um, all right, let's see what what else we got here. Um, let's refresh Honda's page. Honda might Honda may have uh, shown something here, guys. Uh, let me go back to Honda here. Oh yeah, here we go. We got some Honda stuff, guys. Let's get into it. Um, no, no, no. Is this it? 218? No, I got excited. I clicked the wrong thing. I, I thought they were going to talk about the bezel. Uh, news release. I need to check, check the news release part portion. Don't see any, anything on the Honda end of things yet now i'm gonna i'm gonna check maybe my honda pages here honda nothing on the american honda newsroom nothing on the japanese page so i don't know if honda has anything out yet um nissan we're about 20 minutes out and then Genesis, we're about 40 minutes out. So we got a, a lot more coming tonight, guys. We're about halfway through. Uh, I think we're going to go back and visit. Oh, we already talked about the ES. I think we're going to go back and visit the BZ4X. We're going to fly through these images, maybe a little bit more, talk about them, um, and kind of go from there. I really have to use the restroom, so I'm just going to leave this image up. Um, Take my face down <laughs> and turn my mic off for a little bit, maybe a couple, um, maybe a minute. Like it's not going to be very long. And uh, maybe like, let's see here. What else can I do?
Check, check, check. Hopefully I didn't lose too many of you. Uh, I saw a few people left, which is fine. I can't, I can't keep you guys against your will and your bedtime all night long. So... Good, good time tonight, guys. I'm so, so, yeah, re real YouTubers wear diapers. I don't go to the bathroom. Honda E with a 350 kilowatt motor from, uh, from Yamaha. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. That thing would just be hooligan city. Just roast tires. IS 500 V8. Amen, brother. Amen. We can all do more of that. And I will be, will be bringing you guys IS500 V8 hands-on action. Oh, so excited. Oh, you're buying an MR2 tomorrow? That sounds amazing. Amazon workers have to pee in a bottle. Yeah, well, so do truck drivers. Darren says, love your channel, Kirk. Thanks, man. Thanks, everyone, for coming out tonight. What the heck? Guys, it's so late. Well, it's late for me. It's 10 o'clock at night. And we're here talking about electric vehicles being debuted in China. Think about that. This very moment, electric vehicles are being debuted in China. Crazy times we live in where we can get updates from China instantaneously. We got about on the well I'm gonna refresh Honda because I don't know when Honda's announcements are coming. So we're we're getting a Honda EV and a Honda plug-in hybrid. But I don't know when those are being announced. Uh, 11 o'clock local time, which should be like right now. Oh, no, no, that's, that says April 8th. So uh, I'm not quite sure. Not quite sure. Uh, they have the CDX for Acura in Japan, in Japan, China. In China, they have the Acura CDX, which is like a luxuryified, um, uh, what's it called? HRV, Honda HRV. So we don't get that in America, and they're talking about the RDX there. Now, there's some cool motorcycles there, uh, some smaller CVs, as well as the CRF 1100L, which is the Africa Twin. Pretty cool vehicle there. Um, yeah, so hopefully we hear from them soon. About 15 minutes till we hear from Nissan. I have no idea what we're going to see from Nissan. I'm assuming the Leaf. We'll have more information on the Leaf. Uh, more information maybe. Oh, not the Leaf. Maybe the Leaf. Maybe the Leaf, but definitely the Aria. And maybe the small vehicle that they're talking about. Um, that Like a smaller electric vehicle. Uh, crossover. Slots below the aria guys i'm trying to read the comments as well as talking it doesn't work for me <laughs> all right focusing on the comments will the ls survive i think so i don't think see them ever killing it but nothing sacred anymore so anything's possible um heart from inus says prem conceso uh love from inside the u.s indiana united i have no idea i'm Sorry, it could be a total, it could not be the United States. I don't know what that means. So maybe I'm getting too old to understand the flag things. Any update on the new Land Cruiser? Not really. I've said a lot about it. So I think it's most of that information is already out there. We just need a official unveil at this point. Just release LFZ. I'm telling you, I would love that. An Acura Legend EV would be sick. That would be so sick. Oh my gosh. I have never thought of that idea, Neon Rain. They bring back the Legend as an EV. 
Oh man, that gives me goosebumps. That's like, that's too good. It's too good. Acura wouldn't do that because that makes way too much like retro nostalgic sense. And they, they just, they're, they're not going to do that. Oh, that'd be so sick. Anyways, um, the concept re- was revealed. What concept? Honda's? Honda's concept? Or are we talking about the uh, BZ4X? I'm, get, I'm getting excited. Too excited. No kidding, Chessy. Chessy. Hey, good to see you, man. Chessy's always, always commenting on the channel. Awesome. Uh, he's very active. Acura really needs to bring the CDX over here in the United States. Dealers are asking. Absolutely. The ILX is a joke. They need to have something, something a little bit more competitive at the entry point. Um, Lexus has a UX. Give us something like that. Um, Infinity used to have uh the qx30 that kind of failed but they need to have something to at least try give us a small crossover acura nissan press conference of 14 minutes yep i can just l- kind of leave this up if you guys want to see it uh mr hawk nice channel this is why i subscribe thanks brother appreciate that everything is evs because china right yeah china's really forcing evs they benefit massively from EVs. You guys have to realize that it's not about this whole thing is a small, 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 small part of it is about saving the planet. And in fact, we don't know how much damage we're doing to the planet. That's like incalculable. But what's going on is that China can make a lot they, they can't make a lot of money off oil because they don't have a lot of oil. So if they can switch cars to be run off of batteries, well, they can produce batteries. They can mine batteries. They have the raw materials in China and they can procure the materials from elsewhere for, for inexpensive. Uh, so that's kind of why that's the number one reason why things are shifting so hard towards EVs. It's, I'm telling you guys, it's not because the main reason is not because of the environmental impacts there are some and there are some good benefits to this but if all the evs are run off of fossil fuels from the power plants are we are we kind of spending our tires maybe a little bit and i think the few like hydrogen is as long as it can be produced uh green green with no uh greenhouse emissions or or you know carbon emissions uh, you would have smaller batteries. So that's why Toyota's into hydrogen. I could get into this. I don't want to talk too much about it because it's very political and try to stay away from politics on the channel. Uh, But yes, there's a reason why China is pushing EVs very hard. They don't care that much about the environment. They care about building their industry, building their economy and building wealth. And I can't blame them. I want to build wealth, and I also want to leave a small, small footprint, small carbon footprint on on the earth. And uh, we're all consumers; we're all hypocrites. So it is what it is. And yes, I'll just stop. I'll just cut myself off. Cut myself off. And we have a donation. Planeta Tiara, five dollars. No, thank you. You don't need to thank me. Thank you. Thank you guys for all your support. Um, I don't know what else to say. You guys are amazing. You guys make my dreams come true. You put food on the table for my four daughters, for me and my wife. You bro- you made it possible for, m- for me to uh, quit my full-time job as a salesperson uh, to doing YouTube full-time and to move back to Florida where I'm supposed to be thanks to you guys. Like, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry tonight. It's just, we just got a couple unveils to get through and we'll be done. Is the IS500 worth it? Well, we don't know the price yet. Uh, so. I'm so far behind on the comments. Mark says, I won't be buying an EV for a long time. I don't find any fun in them. 
I know when the world will be EV sooner than later, but for right now, not not now. And I would agree. I've driven EVs and fast ones and Teslas. They're not as fun. They're not as, as engaging. They're not as exhilarating on average. Um, I would say if you compare a gasoline sports car to like a dual motor Tesla, the dual motor Tesla kind of has that initial like, holy shit, like, this is crazy, the, the instant power. But, like, a sports car, especially with a manual, it's, it's a relationship. You can build a relationship. You know the car. You can feel the car. Like, I just watched my Miata review uh, that I just put out yesterday. It's, it's, it's much more uh, relationship, much more, like, man and beast sort of thing when it... And then we're switching from man and beast to almost man and computer. It's a big, big jump. So, and you know, in terms of exhilaration, I still think motorcycles are for are a little bit more exhilarating than even the most exhilarating cars. Just the more right, the more dangerous things are in theory, the more fun they are, right? Uh, and then also riding a horse is one of the most exhilarating things I've done. Sprinting on a horse through a field, I'll never forget that experience and. The closest thing would be riding a motorcycle fast, but still, you don't have quite the same relationship with the motorcycle as you do with the sentient creature that is a horse. So, yes. If you guys haven't ridden a horse, go and do it. Go and do it. It's an amazing experience. Brian doesn't think our electric grill grids designed for all this. Well, yeah, I mean, EVs are EV. We're not going to go full EV overnight. It's going to take some time. Um, and our grids definitely can't handle it now. I'm, I'm worried for California in a lot of ways. But when it comes to uh, electric vehicles, I'm a, a little bit more worried for them because they're going full electric. I think it's by 2035 maybe sooner fully electric and they already have rolling brownouts like their their infrastructure for electrification is just and power is not good uh so yeah banning banning gas cars by 2035 in california so the next debut is nissan i don't know what they're talking i don't know what nissan is going to bring us tonight but unlike honda unlike well, you and Lexus are actually bringing us a live stream. I love Nissan for that. They're always good with those, those uh, Nissan live streams. If you guys have been in a Nissan live stream with me before, make sure to put in the comments below. They're always a good time with translators. Uh, it's just a blast. So... Are there any leaks on the 2022 USDM LX? No, Jake, there are no leaks on the LX. Toyota and Lexus are extremely good at covering things up. They know they've been doing it a long time and they know how to brush things under the rug if they do get out. Will the RAV4 have a facelift in the 2022 model year? In theory, it should. I mean... Does it really need to? It's outselling everything else out there. But they'll probably still do it because they can, and it doesn't cost them much to do a refresh. Um, oh, I'm so far behind, guys. So far behind. Miatas are amazing. It's like dr driving a professional car, says NEC. Yep, they are... Very, very fun. Kirk, try a Kings 
Kingston S18 electric unicycle. It's insane. You know, I have in I I have multiple children, right? I don't want to like motorcycles are already risky enough. <laughs> a, a, a super powered electric unicycle sounds super fun. I don't trust myself on it. Actually, I probably would, to be honest. But holy cow, can you imagine just like in a pothole? See ya. See you later. Oh, dude, for the love of noise, he's saying when he moves to Sweden, he will 100% buy a motorcycle. That's badass. What's the best way to learn a manual? Um, there's, a, there's a lot of different ways to learn a manual. Um, me having knowledge on how they work just by playing video games helped, I would say, before even stepping foot or sitting into a a vehicle um but i learned in a, a 91 mx5 that i bought in college technically never driven a manual by then but i had was it by then no i hadn't had any other manuals at that point i think i drove my friend's hyundai tiburon gt back in college just for a little bit I remember killing it on a hill and i was like really embarrassed but like the miata is very forgiving uh, it's one of the best ways I learned. Well, the only way I learned. So I don't know. Like you just have to throw yourself into it and you got to be prepared to just roll with the punches. Not everyone's the same. It's going to take some people longer to learn a manual than others. But just have patience with yourself. Take it slow and don't do it in traffic. <laughs> um, I did just because I, I was confident enough. I killed it three way three times on the way home from me, me buying it to my house where I was living at the time. I killed the Miata three times, but I, I was confident in my ability to, to drive it. Um, but if you're not that confident yet, go into a parking lot or a neighborhood where there's not a lot of traffic and you'll be fine. Like, it's, it's one of the best. If you're a car fan, it's one of the best things you can do for yourself is to learn how to drive a manual. And you don't have to be perfect at it. I'm not like a professional manual driver. Heel to toe downshift. I like downshifting, but like heel toe downshifting is another skill altogether. And I haven't even like come close to getting there. And I don't care to, unless I own my own car. Oh, okay. We're getting close. We got possibly a new unveil here for Nissan. Holy cow. Let's turn the volume up. Um, hopefully you guys, yeah, there's just no, there's no sound pumping through yet. We got some donations that I want to hit on before we start this. Hoi uh, Huey Jong, I could be butchering your name. I apologize. He just threw me a 20 spot. Thank you so much. Looks like you have a maybe a Prius in your uh, profile picture. I have a Prius as well. Um, Huey, could be Huey or Huey Jong. Thank you, man. 20 bucks. That's amazing. Thank you so much. That's incredible. And Sean John, 06, he says, I hear this, he's like five bucks. Thanks, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You guys are so generous. Uh, cheers to both of you. Cheers to both of you. Uh, thank you so much. Oh, and he says, Here, here's to Fuji Red Apple, uh, which he's, he's saying, uh, uh, Huey Young saying, because I have, a, I have a red Prius that I call Fuji, and there's also Fuji Apple. So thank you. Thank you for picking up on that. Appreciate it. Jessica's two car garage. Sure, pure EVs are clean running meaning no gas emissions at the tailpipe. Now let's look at what it makes uh, to t what it takes to make those batteries and just how recyclable they are. What's the long-term impact? Well, the short-term impact of batteries are very bad uh, because of all the mining and the and the all the stuff that goes into all the carbon uh, carbon that's produced and producing those batteries. And then if they're not recycled. That's not good for the earth either. Um, and it's not because, yeah, you guys, you guys know. So she points out some good things there. So batteries, batteries are amazing. Why did it go back to, to connect with you all today. Ashwani Gupta? Ashwani Gupta. 
the challenge of COVID with tremendous resolve and are managing the ripple effects to best of our ability. Real quick, thank you for the love of noise. $2 saying third gen MR2s are slept on. Their handling is on par with a Lotus. Some words of advice there. Nissan is very proud to be part of this show. It is true that automotive industry is constantly transforming and COVID has accelerated these trends even more. This is making us redefine the way we think cars and sell cars, whether it is the technologies in the vehicle or online commerce or supply chain management. It is inevitable. There are multitude of drivers for transformation. And the most important one is the customer. China has the most technologically sophisticated consumer base in the world and is constantly raising the bar for automotive industry, challenging us and the other automakers to offer cutting edge innovations and the best services. It is no surprise that China is at the core of our transformation plan, Nissan Next. As the single largest automotive market globally, China contributed to more than 35% of Nissan's global total sales. And I'm sure we'll continue to play a big role in our progress. As China stands at the forefront of defining the future of mobility, we as Nissan are ready to share this agenda and drive forward with innovations in connected, autonomous, and electrified technologies. With this intention, we will expand our advanced driver assistance system, ProPilot, to five models, including Ultima, Qashqai, and X-Trail by the end of 2022. That means 70% of Nissan core models in China will be equipped with this award-winning technology. I'm sure this technology will continue to wow Chinese customers not only that, Nissan Connect, our vehicle connectivity technology that seamlessly connects you to the world around, will be deployed across more than 90% of Nissan models by 2024. The products and technologies you will experience here will bring to life our brand promise, innovation for excitement. China is undergoing a monumental shift in our car sales from gas to electrified vehicles. As a pioneer in automotive innovation and electrification, Nissan is well positioned to meet this trend. Building on our legacy, Nissan will have nine electrified models on sale in China by 2025. This includes the Nissan Aria, our new flagship model unveiled at the Beijing Motor Show last year. The Aria, a fusion of our strong SUV heritage and 10-year experience of EVs, is a fully electrified SUV. A representative of everything we are doing under Nissan Next, this car is a hallmark of Nissan Intelligent Mobility. Alongside pure electric vehicles, e-power technology is at the cornerstone of Nissan's future product strategy. E-power is a game changer when compared with an average hybrid with three unique advantages. Full-time motor drive, high efficiency engine generator, and flash battery boosting. We want our customers in China to experience the feeling of excitement, quietness, and smooth acceleration of driving an electric car with the confidence and convenience of having a fuel tank to always rely on. We are very excited that e-power will be coming to one of our most popular models in China soon. The best-selling sedan, Nissan Silphi, and eventually in six models by 2025. 
Our latest powertrain innovations are, however, not just limited to electrification. After more than 20 years of development, we have successfully launched the most advanced combustion engine ever, Nissan's VC turbo engine. This is a breakthrough for internal combustion engines that incorporates a continually adjusting compression ratio, which maximizes both fuel efficiency and power. That innovation has now come together in the all-new Nissan X-Trail. We launched the first generation X-Trail here in 2008, and in many ways, it redefined the SUV market. It is the legend of SUVs and represents the freedom, statement piece, and self-reward that we believe customers desire. And now, once again, the X-Trail aims to reimagine the SUV segment. The all-new X-Trail offers several of Nissan Intelligent Mobility Technologies, including our revolutionary driver assistance system, ProPilot, that has made many of your journeys comfortable and enjoyable. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the all-new Nissan X-Trail. Which is the same as the Rogue, if you guys didn't know. X-Trail and Rogue are the exact same thing. Just a rogue, guys. The rogue, you know, it's bizarre because the rogue came here first. And the X Trail is hitting the other market secondarily, which is interesting because usually the Amer the Americas are not the first to get certain products. So I'm okay that we got the the rogue first. I mean, it's it's actually it's super important for the American market for them to have a wrap order. Uh, CRV competitor, so it has a VC turbo though. The Rogue here in the United States doesn't have a VC turbo, does it? Holy cow! Hold hold on, hold on. Pretty sure it doesn't have a VC turbo. The powertrains might be new on it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. Vice President of Dongfeng Motor Corporation, Executive Vice President of Dongfeng Motor Company Limited, and Deputy Managing Director of Dongfeng Nissan Passenger Vehicle Company, Mr. Chen Hao. 女士们、先生们,掌声欢迎东风汽车集团有限公司副总经理,东风汽车有限公司执行副总裁,东风日产乘用车公司副总经理,陈浩先生。Thank you, Mr. Uh -oh. Okay, okay, we have translators, thank God. Guests and media friends, it's my pleasure to see you again. As Mr. Gupta said, we strive to bring the best technology to consumers. With the debut of the all new X Trail in China, we fulfill this promise. The Super X Trail Best in One project in which we have invested more than 19 billion yuan on the model. It's one of the largest and the most complicated vehicle launched projects in the history of Nissan. Nissan's high quality standards and the R&D resources of global Nissan make the all-new X-Trail achieve the new breakthroughs in design, research and development and manufacturing. In terms of design, the all-new X-Trail is designed and developed for two major automotive markets, 
China and the United States. It represents the integration of the resources of Nissan's four global design centers. It took five years to ensure the all-new X-Trail become the most globalized model in the history of Nissan. In terms of R&D, the all-new X-Trail is unprecedented. It adopts the all-new CMF CD platform with a design change rate reaching 100%. It brings multi-dimensional improvements in handling, driving, safety, and versatility. It realizes the real product revolution. In the manufacturing process, production process, and the method have iteratively evolved. New materials, processes, and technologies have been widely adopted. This all to ensure the top quality of the all-new X-Trail born with confidence. Go by your heart. The V-Motion 3.0 design language. So real quick, if the Rogue had the VC Turbo in America, the QX50 and the QX55 would be completely pointless. So, all right. And the joint pictures go. leading Nissan Connect 2.0 complemented by an enhanced version of a pro pilot creates a luxury technology cockpit experience with a superior quality born with the freedom go anywhere you want equipped with a second generation four times four i intelligent all-wheel drive five modes one touch switching conquering all new con conditions equipped with a vc turbo 300 achieves the strongest power and the lowest fuel consumption in its class with a fully upgraded powertrain, the all-new X-Trail realizes a powerful all-terrain driving control. The upgraded all-new X-Trail delivered comprehensive performance and is aimed to create an unforgettable life exploration experience for you and your family. It displays the charm of an all-area exploration and enjoyment SUV. It brings new excitement and values to the SUV market, and we hope it creates a new, brighter future. Outstanding product experience is a result of a powerful technology. Every revolutionary technological innovation drives the progress of the times. Today, we bring a new power solution that is ePower, a game changer. ePower offers a seamless and a powerful acceleration experience similar to an EV without needing a charging station. As the integration of our 90 years of experience in combustion technology and 70 years in electric powertrain technology, it absorbs the tuning concepts from a GTR team and a Nissan LEAF team. The ePower uses the onboard gasoline engine and the electricity generator that provides power to the battery pack for full-time motor drive. With the engine running at optimal speed, with less fuel, you can get astonishing electric power. Although the system uses a small capacity battery, it provides rapid power response thanks to flash battery boosting. E-power and zero emission have become the cutting edge of electrified driving for Donfeng Nissan to explore new possibilities for green travel. Technology brings continuous iteration of a product, and it's also the values of an enterprise. We use advanced technology to help realize our commitment to society and strive to bring customers an excellent product experience. We also strive to promote the development of society in a better direction. The automotive industry is vibrant and entering a changing era of challenges and hopes. As a leading enterprise in the industry, Dongfeng Nissan will embrace this changing era with advanced technology and intelligent integration. With the support of five core technologies and the dual brand strategy of Nissan and Venusia, Dongfeng Nissan is continuously exploring the path of reducing carbon emission while continuously creating surprise for consumers. Make every drop of oil becoming surging power and make the best use of every kilowatt of electricity. We aim to be closer to our customers and friendlier to the environment and to bring a more confident 
exciting and uh, connected mobility life. Thank you very much. To the stage and take photos. 请陈浩先生留步, that wasn't much of a transition there. 东风汽车集团有限公司总经理, 党委副书记, Mr. Yang Qing. These, transi These transitions are crazy. Uh, Mr. Zhao Shuliang, Party Secretary of Dongfeng Motors, Party Secretary of Dongfeng Nissan Passenger Vehicles, Vice President of Dongfeng Motors, Mr. Li Qun, Executive Vice President, uh, Mr. Suzuki Akihisa, uh, Dongfeng Nissan Passenger Vehicle Company, Mr. Anthony Barsis, Dongfeng Motors, Mr. Uh, Chen Xinling, Vice President, Vice President, and Mr. Atsushi Ichikawa, Mr. Guotao, Vice President of Dongfeng Motor Co. Limited. All right, um, <laughs> Mr. Hawk says we need Suzuki cars back. That would be cool. They're, they're, Suzuki's uh, big in India, so they're big in other parts of the world. They're just done. Uh, Truman, has Toyota already gone? Uh, yes, they've already gone. Um, I just realized that my Lexus ES video I had going at 1040 instead of 940, even though we've already talked about the ES refresh. So I'm just going to post that video tomorrow night. Um, I mean, yeah, I could get some traction on it tonight, but it's not worth it to me. So I'll just post it tomorrow. There's probably not that many people out there posting videos on the new ES. Uh, Motormouth posted a video on the new um, Toyota electric vehicle, so he may have had some embargoed information on that to be able to produce it uh, so early. So that's cool on his part. So I know some people have been able to produce some information on the uh, the Toyota side of things. I'll just produce. Uh, well, this this video is done. Yeah, so all they did was, uh, Nissan anyways, all they did was unveil the new X-Trail, which is the same thing as the Rogue, really. And uh, they might be getting the VC Turbo from the sounds of it in China. So, yeah, there, we're not going to ever see the VC Turbo anytime soon anyways on the Rogue here in the United States. So, um, however... Wasn't there talks that there's going to be like a small one liter or one one point three liter three cylinder turbo? Maybe it's a one point six three cylinder turbo coming for the Rogue this year. Don't remember the exact numbers, but that's a possibility. That is coming. That is coming this year. Just don't remember the the size of that engine. Any NX news? No NX news. Uh, definitely stay tuned for the channel, Jaden, because I will cover NX details, powertrains, hands-on coverage. I will give that to you guys. Don't worry. Just hang on a little bit later, a few more months for the NX. Uh, BZ4X. Yeah, we can talk about it real quick. So uh, we're going to go over to... Oh, shoot. Hold on. Genesis is going right now. Genesis is live. Genesis just opened up their first showroom, I believe, in China. So they're doing business in China now. So this is really important for them.
Oh, Just want to thank uh, Planeta Tierra again. Sending me a five spot. So appreciate that. Thank you so much. You guys are so generous. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Marcus Hanna. To me, underneath the drapes, it looks like the... Uh, what is it? God, I can't even think of what it's called. The Vision X concept. Uh, I'm terrible at remembering. Watch out. Hurry, sir. Welcome to Genesis... And welcome to Genesis X concept. That's what it looked like that was on underneath the, the and I'm drapes very there. Excited about the opportunity to introduce our new vision of luxury. As our name implies, Genesis is all about creating something new. And that's what we bring to the luxury automotive segment. As a brand, there are three essential pillars that hold true for everything that we do. We are audacious, progressive, and distinctly Korean. For evidence of this, look no further than our official launch in China. Just three weeks ago, we unveiled our brand by lighting up the sky over the Bund with a record-breaking drone performance, followed by the opening of the first Genesis studio in China a luxury lifestyle oasis in downtown Shanghai, which is the embodiment of our customer-centric mindset. Today is another historic day for our brand, as it represents a number of firsts. Our very first appearance at the Shanghai Auto Show, our first ever world premiere of a new product outside of South Korea, and the first electric model of Genesis. None of this would have been possible without the ongoing support of Jay Chung, the global head of the Genesis brand. So please welcome him now to tell you more about our shared vision for Genesis in China. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jay Chung, global head of Genesis brand. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank you for joining us today. My name is Jay Chang, the global head of Genesis Brand. I'm very pleased to meet you in virtual. Since our launch, Genesis has established a unique design identity by introducing one new model after another. Our global lineup features five models in all, with more to come soon. We have expanded our customer base around the world with rapid growth in markets like Korea, US, Canada, Middle East, Russia, and Australia. In addition, over the past five years, our product quality and customer experience innovations have been internationally recognized, winning globally renowned awards for safety, quality, and the design. Across our markets, Genesis customers have come to recognize our commitment to distinctive design, product quality, and authentic, mindful brand experience throughout the entire ownership journey. Now we want to bring a new concept of luxury in our own way. It's gonna be the Genesis X now concept, right? Right? The next chapter in our brand history. Today is very special. It represents a variety of first for the Genesis brand, not only because this is Genesis' first appearance at the Shanghai Auto Show, but it is also the first time we unveil our new products outside Korea. I'm very happy to celebrate our historical moment with you. Today, we present Genesis' first ever EV model here in Pretty Shanghai. exciting, pretty we exciting. Embarking on new relationship with youthful and energetic well, if it's if it's a concept, it's a it's the X concept. If it's not a concept, it's the GV eighty E. That's what I'm saying. Marks the beginning of our journey into the EV market, representing Genesis in the era of electrification. Ladies and gentlemen, the electrified G eighty. Thank you. That's what I thought. I made a video a couple of days ago about that. That's probably what is going to be the G eighty E. Just based on the teaser image they showed, it was 
the front end of a G80, but with a flattened, non-porous grill. So... <laughs> They're like, here's the vehicle, and then they just show the history of the company and then don't show the vehicle until after the intro. I'm, I'm The volume's all the way up, guys. The volume is maxed out on OBS. It's maxed out on the YouTube player. There it is. Looks exactly as kind of how we expected it. Those wheels are pretty cool though. I'm typically not always sold on Genesis wheels. I'm okay with those. I'm all right with those wheels. Gentlemen, electric luxury starts now. This all new, all electric sedan marks the beginning of our journey into the EV market and the first step towards electrification. The Genesis electrified G80 is introduced to fulfill our customers' desire for an EV with uncompromising driving dynamics, as well as thoughtful, sustainable materials without range anxiety. For the electrified G80, we have utilized alternative concepts, including aluminum and carbon fiber reinforced plastics mm. to reduce body weight while enhancing rigidity. Mm. This has allowed us to achieve a range 500 kilometers 500 on any DC. Hold on. In the Hold on. The that's not that's not as much as you want. Oh, it froze on me. G80 utilizes sustainable with materializes sustainable with materials with recycled wood PET and nylon as well as natural dyes for the seat fabric this eco-friendly outlook is supported by a solar charging roof the future of mobility is electric and you are about to witness our second electric vehicle of the day the ultimate vision of athletic elegance paired with the ambition of a paired with the ambition of a system we got some crazy lag Ladies going gentlemen, on the asia premier Okay. Well, we've already seen this. This is Concept X. So 500 kilometers of any DC is like 350, but I don't know if that's 350 miles or kilometers, which is a huge difference. So I got to figure out what's going on here with any DC. NEDC is pretty outdated, by the way. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> please welcome Sang Yap Lee, Global Head of Genesis Design. I am Sang Yap Lee, Head of Genesis Design. Genesis Design is built around the core principle of our design identity, 
athletic elegance. So, 500 kilometers NEDC is 448 kilometers WLTP. Uh, okay. Perfect execution can only be described as ultimate athletic elegance. A long nose and pullback cabin reveals a classic duty pool. Which would be 400 kilometers in the EPA times. So about 250 miles. <laughs> Gosh, that took me way too long. The two lines. 250 miles in the EPA is roughly 500 miles in the NEDC. There's a lot of variation in there, but it's, it's very rough. It is always visually strong and stands out. Tell me, it's not 350 miles. It is not. It's it's more like 250 miles in the EPA. I don't have a head spreadsheet for this conversion. I know. I know. No spreadsheet for it. And the luxury that wraps around you awaken your senses. Reduced impact, reductive design, beauty of white space. Beauty of white space is manifest in the Genesis design through the experience. Obsession to detail is omnipresent. Go ahead and awaken your senses. Touch and feel. Breathe aroma. That defines the Genesis X concept's interior. The next gen slim vents and freeform displays focus on the needs of the driver and driver alone. The Genesis X concept is not a just a show car, it is a statement. A statement that reads Today, we stake our territory. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the fact that we put so many firsts in Shanghai speaks volumes about our huge commitment to the Chinese market. And we have more exciting plans for Genesis in China right here, right now. Naturally, these plans begin with our audience, the Generation Genesis. A generation who challenged convention with bold perspectives and refined taste in aesthetics and lifestyle. We are committed to building authentic relationships with this generation through the unique Genesis experience, which is a meaningful, stress-free approach centered on human touch, convenience, trust, and transparency. To meet our audience where they are, we have developed an all-new business model tailored to the Chinese market, an omni-channel approach based on direct sales, supported by trusted agents and online sales. Building this brand ecosystem starts with Genesis Studios. Our first Genesis Studio opened in Shanghai earlier this month and will be joined by Genesis Studio Chengdu in May. To strengthen this presence, we will be partnering with trusted agents to establish full function stores in Shanghai and Chengdu in the second half of 2021. And because trust is essential to any relationship, we're committed to implementing a transparent pricing model through our Genesis One Price Promise, which ensures a unified vehicle price across all channels. And we are introducing the Genesis Partner, a dedicated companion for each and every person interested in our brand, focused on providing the best one-to-one -one experience during the entire Genesis lifetime journey. All of this enabled by the Genesis digital ecosystem. To make a positive impact on our customers' lives, we have created Genesis Care, a confident five-year warranty with complimentary scheduled maintenance. Customers will be protected by five-year unlimited mileage 24-7 roadside assistance nationwide. Plus, a Genesis Valet with designated pickup and home delivery starting within the cities of Shanghai and Chengdu. The Genesis journey in China has to begin 
with absolutely exceptional products. The Genesis G80 and Genesis GV80. The G80 is our progressive take on a classic luxury sedan. The GV80 combines the bold stance of an SUV with the elegance of a sedan. Both vehicles evoke an outstanding unity in terms of exterior and interior design. Safety, quality, performance, comfort, and convenience. Together, they represent the distinctive Genesis design philosophy, athletic elegance, characterized by the face of every Genesis, which takes inspiration from the Genesis emblem. The interior presents an elegant atmosphere that balances personal space with state-of-the-art technology. We call this concept the beauty of white space. This commitment to exceptional design, quality, and safety has made Genesis one of the highest ranked brands. Just want to say thank you to relax and stay calm. Kirk, I support your channel as always. Thank you for your, thank you so much for your support as well as everyone else's support. Uh, you guys are just amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Relax and stay calm. I need more of that relax and stay calm in my daily life. Oof, thank you for the reminder. ...independently learns the characteristics of the driver. Delivering refined performance is a key promise of the brand, which is why the G80 and GV80 are equipped with a powerful 2.5-liter turbo engine providing peak output horsepower of 304 delivered through an all-wheel drive system. Our progressive technologies respond to the needs of our audience. The Genesis infotainment system includes AR view navigation, Baidu automatic speech recognition, QQ music, and smooth Chinese handwriting recognition. Genesis Digital Car Key and Genesis Connected Services offer innovative solutions combining safety, car care, and remote functionalities. In China, Genesis will offer two trims with an outstandingly high level of standard specification, luxury and ultimate luxury. For example, all Genesis Active Safety Control features and the Genesis infotainment system are already included from the luxury trim. If you would like to be one of the first Genesis owners in China, you can place a pre-order with an intention deposit of 1,888 RMB via our official website, WeChat Mini Program, or Genesis Studios, starting now. Ladies and gentlemen, the G80 Luxury and the G80 Ultimate Luxury indicatively start from 363,800 RMB and 436,800 RMB respectively. The GV80 Luxury and GV80 Ultimate Luxury indicatively start from 576,800 RMB and 668,800 RMB respectively. Delivery will start within 2021 in Shanghai and Chengdu. This is an incredible moment and privilege for me as this represents the true genesis of Genesis in China. At this young and exciting stage of our journey, we're fully focused on brand building. We will continue to expand our footprint, delivering the unique Genesis experience city by city. And we will continue to bring exciting products to the market. Now that Genesis is here, we will constantly strive to inspire you with a new vision of what automotive luxury can be. This is just the beginning. Please welcome the executives on stage to join Marcus Hanna for a photo call.
Okay, I'm going to assume I didn't miss a whole lot there at the end. Obviously pictures, big deal. Guys, what what a night. What a night. Uh, the GV80E, don't know if we're going to even get it here in the United States. Um, that was kind of a nothing burger, I would agree. Um, 250 miles of range? Here in the United States? That's what it roughly converts to? Uh, let's see here, what do you... Do you think Herc washed his hands? You guys will never know. Never know. Does it freak you out with me putting my hand up there on the camera? <laughs> uh, okay. Let's just, let, okay, let's close that down. Um, Genesis, GV80E is, is here for China anyways. There it is. Um, let's look at the press release. Okay, so we got some more information here. 350 kilowatts of rapid charging. That's super fast. 10 to 80% in just 22 minutes. That's, that's cutting edge in terms of right now. It's still not fast enough. You can fill up your car with gas in five minutes, but still. 10 to 80% in just 22 minutes. That is very, very fast for what we have available today. Again, any DC is 500 kilometers, which is roughly 250 miles based off of my calculations, which who knows <laughs> at this time of night after a beverage or two, who knows if those calculations are right or even close. Uh, so of course, in order to achieve this sort of Charging speed, we have 400 or 800 volt multi rapid charging system. Uh, yeah, I feel like that stuff wasn't talked about, I don't believe, in the press release. And again, don't think it's going to come to America anytime soon. Uh, Nissan. We're just recapping everything tonight, guys. We're just recapping everything. Nissan X-Trail, which is the same thing as the Rogue here stateside. We've had it for a few months now here in the United States, but they're having a new e-power system. I like this, I don't know, diagram. Do like that. Uh, let's see here. Do more information on I think one of you guys in the chat mentioned that it's the three cylinder VC turbo powering this e power system. That's yeah, uh, it's pretty cool. I don't see a whole lot of information though on that regard. In that regard, what's this, what's this right here? Is this old 325. Yeah, that's old. Okay. Uh, going back, whatever happened to Honda? Did we find out what happened to Honda? We never, I don't think we ever got updates on what happened to Honda. Uh, if I click on the Shanghai Motor Show exhibit, did they not have a press conference? I'm going to have to look, guys. I don't see anything from Honda yet. I mean, they could be going on now, but. I don't see anything from Honda, so maybe tomorrow we'll be able to get something from them. Uh, again, Toyota and Lexus did have a lot to talk about today, mainly not so much the ES. I'll uh, watch my video tomorrow morning when that goes live. I'm supposed to go live tonight, but I was off an hour. It's fine. I'm tired. That's what happens. Uh, and we got 
the new BZ4X. It's a, it's a mouthful. Uh, yeah, it's trademarked BZ4X. So I would expect. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I would expect Lexus to call all their electric vehicles in the near term BZs or BZ, uh, depending on where you're at. So. Blake Thomas says 250 miles sucks. Blake, you also have to realize the G80 is not a skateboard platform. That's just a car that they turned into an EV. So it's not designed to carry that many battery packs from the get-go. So um, Antoine, what's up? Happy Sunday for what's left of it. Uh, I only got about 50 minutes left of my Sunday. Welcome back, Antoine. What's up, man? All right. Let's see. Uh, what else you got? BZ is close to BRZ. I totally agree <laughs> with you there. It's going to be a little bit confusing. Um, yeah, I got a lot of things to just sit back on and, and absorb and soak in in the next couple days. Um, Toyota's BZ4X. I'll probably get a video up on it in the next couple of days unless something bigger comes out. You guys definitely deserve to have my full thoughts on it, even though it's pretty close. I probably gave plenty of thoughts on it tonight, but uh, maybe more condensed, uh, more information packed video on the BZ4X. Um, Now, Honda will have new new stuff. Honda's going to have new stuff. They just haven't announced it at this point in time. It could be later in the day. It's like, I don't know, 12. It's like 12, 10 p.m. in China. So they might have like a lunch break and then Ch uh, Honda might come on the stage. So I don't know. Uh, some of you guys are saying Honda reveal set 12 hours from now on their Chinese website. Well, there you go. So 12 hours from now is noon our time i can't even do i can't even do simple math anymore you guys it's pretty about two two and a half hours past my bedtime so i'm str i'm struggle bussing headphones are off i don't need them on anymore um bz could be one of toyota's most reliable vehicles well the BZ just refers to their electrified lineup, and they're going to have seven in the next five years, I believe. I guess it's right in front of me. I could probably read that, but I'm looking at the European newsroom, uh, and it's a little bit different with the bullet points from the American newsroom. So let's let's go back to the American newsroom. Because we're American. I know you guys are all over the world, but I'm I'm American, so uh stick to what I know. Um 2020, okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Globally, there will be 15 new battery electric vehicles by 2025. That could include like golf carts <laughs> that Toyota's kind of making some micro cars for the Japanese market. Uh seven will be Toyota BZ models. Now, the BZ lineups, BZ1, BZ2, BZ3, BZ4, BZ5. And there's also X variants of all those that they have trademarked. So that's 10 vehicles, I believe. And seven, they're saying, are BZ models coming in in the next five years. My brain's starting to just uh, want to go to sleep right now. And I don't know what else to say about tonight other than it was a lot of fun. We uh, learned a lot about Toyota's electric vehicle right here, the BZ4X. Hopefully they call it something else because it's a mouthful, four syllables for a, for a vehicle. <laughs> It'll definitely, um, yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to say about it. We don't have any specs. We don't have any battery charging we don't have acceleration we don't have horsepower we, we don't know a lot but 
what we've seen of it is pretty much a production vehicle very similar to the lfz electrified vehicle but this one is going to be on the streets globally uh by 2022 and in a lot of markets before mid 2022 where it's supposed to be here in america by mid 2022 that's my guess um thank you guys for all of your support uh i'm gonna fall asleep on camera so it's probably good for me to say good night thank you for your support thank you for everyone who came out tonight thank you for everyone who threw money my way so i can feed the kiddo so i can upgrade my equipment so i can live in florida and give you guys better content more consistent content uh, it's just been an honor and it will continue be to be an honor for many many more years to come uh <laughs> thanks guys have a good night peace out <laughs>